dementia researcher with a blog and a rating. Good time management is a vital skill for any researcher. It's easy to lose track of how much time you're spending working or have a poor balance between different kinds of work you may need to be doing. Especially for work with inconsistent hours, weekends and half days, busy weeks and lighter ones, it's not always easy to keep track of how much you've been working. Flexibility in your time and your schedule can be one of the best aspects of research and academic work settings, but this flexibility can also lead to uncertainty and doubt that you're doing enough, especially if you're a PhD student, without a clear sense of how much you should be working. As scientists, we understand the importance and usefulness of collecting data. After all, you can't manage what you can't measure. Given this, it makes sense to try and actively measure how much time you spend on work and different kinds of tasks as well. This brings me to the solution that I've found helped me manage my time effectively throughout my PhD, time tracking. Time tracking comes from the wild world of productivity hacks and is particularly popular among self-employed people who, like PhD students and many other researchers, don't have a well-defined schedule, or people with billable hours. Conceptually, it is as simple as it sounds. You use timers to track how long you spend doing certain things, and there are a variety of apps out there to serve this end. I use one called A-Tracker. Time tracking can help on both sides of the coin. Sometimes you've been working for what feels like ages, you feel like you've been working really, really hard and you deserve a break. You look at the timer and see you've been there for about 20 minutes. Hmm. Other times, perhaps more often, you feel like you're not working hard enough. You need to be spending more time doing experiments and you're feeling generally inadequate about how much you've been working compared to everyone else around you. You check the timer and see you've been working for 12 hours so far today. Maybe it's time to take a break. Time tracking won't necessarily help you to work harder while the timer is running, but it will keep you honest about how much you are working. Many timer apps come with the ability to program in alerts once you hit certain thresholds, which can help you take breaks or can help you to stop working once you've hit your daily or weekly goal, whatever you set that to be, and be reassured that you are in fact doing enough. I also find it useful to balance out my busy weeks and lighter weeks. Sometimes you just have to do a lot of big experiments and have a really long week. If I've gone 10 hours over my weekly work expectations in one week, it's easier to justify working 10 less hours the next week. I tend to do a lot more lab work during the holidays when there's less going on and the lab is less busy, and then less lab work during term time when there are more talks and social events on and I'm doing more teaching. Time tracking helps me balance this out over time and keeps me well, on track. The usual advice is to start simple, with a single tracker for the most important thing you want to measure. Maybe this is simply PhD work, or homework, or research. Maybe instead of tracking how much time you're working, you're more concerned with things like family time, or being social, or me time, and making sure you're making enough time for the other things in your life. Maybe you have a side gig, or a hobby, or a volunteer role, that you, want to be, that you want to be spending more or less time on. Maybe you're concerned about how much time you're spending on social media. Time tracking is extremely useful for all of this. Not just for having concrete data, but once you get into the habit of running timers, it makes you far more aware of how you're spending your time. I can almost guarantee you there'll be surprises in store for how much or how little time you spend doing things compared to how much time you think you spend on them. Frequently, people think they're not working enough and then find out they're typically working 70-hour weeks, a point for reassessment. Over time, you might want to use a more complex set of timers. Maybe you can have different timers for things like emails, reading papers, meetings, lab work, writing, and so on. This can overcomplicate things, though, and the best time tracking system is the one you'll actually use. When it comes to my PhD work, I simply have three timers, lab work, admin, and conferences. Over time, I've also added timers for other things in my life, like family, relationships, social, dementia researcher, 
photography, running, podcasts, and even other things like time outside. Some things like reading books, I want to do more of, and some things like mindless entertainment, I want to do less of. One of the important caveats with time tracking is that it's like any other kind of quote-unquote biometric tracking. Just like calorie counting or watching your weight, there are healthy and unhealthy ways to go about it. On the one hand, you can use time tracking to keep yourself accountable, to try to spend more time doing the things you want to do and make sure you're not spending too much time on the things that you don't. On the other hand, it's easy to see a set of numbers and want to see them continue on a trend, especially on apps like A Tracker, which will generate graphs of time spent per day, week, or month of given sets of timers. It can be tempting to watch a trend like lab work go up consistently over time and want to keep trying to push it higher every week, which rapidly gets unsustainable and results in you overworking, defeating the entire point of the exercise. Just because you know you're doing 50 hours a week doesn't mean you'll be confident that 50 hours a week is enough. That aside, I've found that time tracking has not just given me concrete data about myself and my habits, which as a researcher is just fun, but can also lead to useful insights. But it's also helped me to bring far more attention and intention to how I spend my time. With so many forces desperate to capture our attention, it can be easy to fall prey to a rogue notification and slip into the seductive embrace of the algorithm. With so much pressure to produce results and no clear sense of how much work is enough, it can be easy to overdo it. Tracking makes me far more aware of what I'm doing and whether it's something I actually want to be doing, and provides me with a list of other things I could be doing alongside. Do I really want to start the social media timer? Or can I add to my writing timer instead? Don't get me wrong, there's a time and a place for social media use. You don't have to be such a rigid pedant about your lifestyle. As with calorie counting or weight watching, there's an unhealthy way and a healthy way to approach it. But if you are trying to do more of something, like maybe you want to spend more time reading papers, or maybe you want to spend more time going for walks outside, or perhaps you want to spend more time exercising, you have to make time for it, and it helps if you can track it and keep yourself accountable for how much time you are in fact spending on it. It also helps if you can see what you're currently spending time on time on, to work out where you can make more time. Some apps allow you to set goals. Maybe you want to exercise at least three times a week, or spend at least four hours a week doing craft. Affordances like notifications and reminders alongside the timing system can really help with this. Wondering why you don't have enough time for reading papers? Maybe it's because you're spending 15 hours a week in meetings and you need to find ways to reduce this. Sure, your contact hours of teaching are three hours per week, but when you add on preparation, marking, paperwork, and admin, how much time is it really taking you? Do you know? Do you have the time to take on a new volunteer role? How much time have similar roles taken you in the past, actually? If you want to get really into the weeds of this, you can set up shortcuts on the smartphone to automatically start and stop timers based on what apps you might be using or where your location is. However, I find the process of manually switching timers on and off useful, not just because it makes me more aware of how I spend my time, but it also helps me to notice task switching. This idea has been popularized recently and probably most notably by Cal Newport in his book, Deep Work, where he presents research on how frequently we switch between tasks and how much this has increased over the last several decades, how easily we get distracted, and how this breaks focus and makes us less productive in the end. It turns out trying to multitask is mostly just terrible. In theory, you want to maximize the uninterrupted time you spend working to be able to get deep into a flow state and minimize going back and forth between different tasks. If switching tasks means having to switch timers all the time, it can be quite tedious. So this actually makes a great incentive to stay on task and do one thing at a time and can help you realize how often you're tempted to switch. In summary, if you think you can go about it in a healthy way, you should absolutely consider giving time tracking a go for one simple reason. You can't manage what you can't measure. Your brain's perception of time is terrible. Don't trust it. The modern world is an attentional minefield. Tread carefully 
and strengthen your intentionality. Start simple. Just track one or two things and you can build it out over time if you find it works for you. I have about 70 timers at this point, to be honest, and track literally everything, but don't start there. Mining your own data can be kind of fun, and you can glean all kinds of useful insights about yourself and your habits. Most importantly, it can be a tool to help you not just manage, but be aware of what you're spending your time on. If you're spending too much time or too little time on it, and hang on, better balance this out. Especially in the PhD and research lifestyle, with such variable and intermittent time, well, you could be working any time, and often, therefore, end up working all the time. I've found this can be a useful and fun way to stay sane. After all, it's only a matter of time. Thank you for listening. Join the Dementia Research bloggers and share your own views.